Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, January 16th, 2024, and this is day two of our Ready, Set, Go Kickoff Blitz 2024. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, today, we have a full lineup, uh, starting with our Microsoft bookings. Then we're going to shift over to Buy Side, Paradigm, and Express Docs. And I would like to go ahead and introduce at this time Kristen Fredericks to take on Microsoft. Thank you, Kristen. All right, thanks, Tim. All right, we're going to introduce the second of our Microsoft tools today. Uh, this is Microsoft Bookings. So the interesting thing about Microsoft Bookings is it works really similarly to other tools that are out there that are other third parties um, like Calendly. So if you've ever used um, any kind of like book an appointment with me um, service at all that's built into either your social media or using a third party tool called Calendly, we now have that tool available for you under your Microsoft account that's available through the company. So if you are using your rwtown.com email, uh, you can access all of these tools through that app launcher on there. I'm going to take you through that in just a second. Uh, but this will give you the ability to book an appointment and have a calendar built into lots of different things. There's lots of different use cases for these calendars. I've put one up here on my screen just so that you can see what it looks like in kind of a real-time example here. This happens to be my training account for Mary Agent. And on her website, uh, she's put this little kind of blog post that says, should I rent or should I buy? How the local market looks for buyers and renters. And it just goes into why buying a home in our region might be a good idea. We're not sure if this is gonna be the right thing for us or not. So Mary has provided the option right here on the end to book an appointment with me to see if buying is right for you. If I were on her website and I were to click that link, it's going to bring me over to her bookings page. So here we are. This happens to be mine. So you're going to see that it says Kristen on the top there. But here's where we have that renter to buyer consultation. So I've created this meeting type called renter to buyer consultation. I've set it for one hour. And then I have a little description here that says learn about whether renting or buying a home is in your future. What somebody would be able to do is take a look at my calendar and they would be able to book an appointment with me based on what's open. Now, this is just an example calendar. It doesn't have to be set for every 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be set for every 30 days. I have this thing wide open so that you can see it in an example here, but it's really easy for someone to book an appointment with you in order to maybe receive that consultation. I'm just gonna go ahead and click that three o'clock. It's gonna ask me for my name, my email address, and any notes that I'd like to share, and it's gonna allow me to book that consultation. Now, once somebody books that consultation or books that appointment or however you have this set, it's going to go ahead and add that consultation or that meeting appointment to your Outlook calendar. The nice thing about this is that you can then use it to uh, create other things. You can use it to create form follow-ups. You can uh, certainly use it and flag it in your Outlook. It's going to go ahead and sync with your calendar in Outlook. And that way it'll book that appointment off. Um, you will also receive, of course, a notification in your email that that appointment has been booked. That brings me to the point of the Outlook calendar. This is only going to book against your Outlook calendar. So you're going to want to make sure that if you are going to use bookings and you're going to create things like meeting types um, or prospecting or things like that, that you're going to want to make sure that every appointment that you have is in Outlook, whether it's a personal appointment um, that you might need to set as a private appointment, whether it is you're going to be, whether you're going to be out showing houses all morning, um, whether you have set apart some prospecting time where you don't want to be disturbed. You're going to want to make sure that you have everything in your Outlook calendar because once you start using this, it's going to compare against your Outlook calendar um, for booking those kinds of appointments. So if you want to use this for maybe a single event where you want to have people sign up to come to something, you can certainly set that day and time and kind of limit it. Um, and it, it won't compare against everything on your Outlook calendar. But if you have something like this where it's going to be a consultation or kind of an open meeting invitation of some sort, um, you're going to want to make sure that everything is in your Outlook calendar so that you don't accidentally double book yourself. Um, nice thing about using bookings is it does get you used to using your Outlook calendar more and more for business purposes. Outlook, of course, ties into lots of different tools. And as we continue to explore the different Microsoft tools that are available to you under your Office 365 account, you'll see how important it is to make sure that you have all of your appointments and consultations, bookings, even just set apart time on your Outlook calendar going forward. 
So that's a live example. Don't forget that you can also take these links. Um, I have this one ha on the website, but you could also add this maybe to your email signature. Uh, you could also add it to an e-card if you wanted to. There's lots of different applications. You can even create a, a booking profile that's a private type. This one happens to be a public one where it's available on my website. But if you were trying to coordinate a meeting with somebody who maybe had a tough schedule, maybe they're another professional or another executive, and, and it's really difficult to pin them down to a time and you've been going back and forth, you can eliminate the friction of trying to create an appointment with somebody by creating them a little private booking page like this um, so that they can compare their calendar at another time and be able to book an appointment with you too. It's a great way to communicate um, individually, but also set up things like prospecting conversations um, and also meetings and other event types as well. So let's take a look at Microsoft Bookings. I have gone ahead and logged into my Outlook account because that is how you guys are usually used to logging into Office 365 is to log into your email. And anytime you're in any of the services online in your Office 365 account, you're gonna see the app launcher, which are these nine little dots over here in the left-hand corner. Sometimes, depending on how your screen might be set up, you might see the app launcher on your right-hand side, but you're always looking for these little nine dots. This is the app launcher here. If I click on this, it's going to show you all the different tools that are available in your apps. Now, some of your uh, tools might be a little different based on whether you've used them in the past or whether you're a staff or a manager or an agent. Depends on your account type as well. For me, I see bookings on here because I've actually used it recently. If you don't see bookings on here for whatever reason, if you just click this button that says explore all your apps, it's going to take you to the main screen of your apps that are available through Office 365, and you'll be able to choose bookings from there. Once you've chosen bookings, and if you continue to use it, it'll most likely show up in your quick launch right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on bookings, and it's going to take me into my bookings manager. <clears throat> All right, so this is what it looks like when you get to bookings. Now, the very first time you use bookings, it's going to look a little bit different. Microsoft likes to give you a little tour of your different tools the very first time you log in. Um, I've obviously used this before. So the first time you log into bookings, it might want to give you like a little 10 step um, instruction of uh, where things are located and how you do certain things in there. Just keep clicking next, 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 and it'll, you'll eventually get to this page here um, where you can go ahead and create your booking page. You're going to notice a couple of things on this main page here. We're actually going to move off to another section fairly quickly. Um, this page is going to show you your personal booking page, and you're going to be able to go and create different meeting types and things like that once we go ahead and click on this button called Go to My Booking Page. But you're also going to see shared booking pages in here. We're not going to go into uh, the nuts and bolts of shared booking pages today just because they're a little bit different. But do know that if you are working on a team and you may need to assign certain appointments to certain people on your team, you do have the ability to um, have shared booking pages where you could create a meeting type um, and then assign it to somebody in your team. So this actually works great if I know we have some managers and staff on these calls today too. Um, if you are looking maybe to, to launch something new in one of our offices or something like that and you need to have a booked appointment, you can certainly push it off to maybe one of your staff members or take it individually if you needed to. Um, if you're on an agent team and maybe one person handles those first time home buyer conversations or that one person handles um, your competitive market analysis appointment and consultations, you would be able to push that off to an individual person. So it works really similarly to these uh, personal pages that I'm going to show you now. The only difference is, is that you can actually assign your team to it. We'll go through the, the shared booking pages in a future class, but do know that it's available on there. If you need help with that kind of setup for whatever reason, you're also um, able to email web support at rwtown.com and we can walk you through ahead of time in front of another class. All right, so for right now, I'm going to go ahead and go to my booking page. And all that's going to do is going to show me the different appointments that I have and allow me to create those. So this is my booking page. Now, I want you to know that this page is not what we're going to share with the public. Notice this URL up here at the top. It says outlook.office.com slash book with me slash me. If I were to try to share that 
um, URL with somebody, it wouldn't go anywhere. Literally, this is uh, just for us to be able to create and manage um, what we want to go on our booking page. And we're going to want to use this share button in the future. And we'll come back to this in order to share it out, either to create a link or to send it an email or to add it to our um, Outlook signature. So we have a couple of things that we can create here. Notice that we have two different versions. We have a public version and we have a private version. Anything that's a public consultation or a public meeting um, is going to be able to show up on your booking screen that you can share. So these are going to be things that are just wide open. If you want a renter to buyer consultation, if you want a first time home buyer consultation, if you just want a meet with me meeting, if you um, want a competitive market analysis consultation, whatever you happen to be that's going to be public and you don't mind people just being able to log on and create those appointments with you at any time, those are going to be those public appointments. We also have the ability to have private appointments on here. So these private appointments are going to have their own links. So these are things that you would send to like an individual if you needed to, or maybe it was an RSVP only event and you needed somebody to maybe book a consultation with you or book a pickup time or something like that. Um, and you only wanted the people that you had invited to be able to have that link. That's going to go under your private section under here. You're going to be able to see both your public and private links on this bookings page because remember, this is just where we're kind of building out the appointment types that we have. Um, this is not for public view. I'm going to go ahead and add another um, public event to this so that you can see all the different options that we have. I'm going to go ahead and click that little plus sign over here on the right hand side. And it's going to bring me to the screen where we get started. So it's going to ask me to add a title. Maybe this is a um, comparative heart analysis consultation. Okay, Maybe we're going to run a postcard, run a Facebook campaign on schedule an appointment with me to see what your home might be worth in today's market. So it's a little bit different than, um, you know, just sending them straight on to your, your buy side page. We're going to add a description. Which your home might sell for in 2024. Now, on our location section here, we do have a couple of different options. A lot of times these are going to be online meetings. We're using Teams more and more. If you leave that checked, it's going to allow you to just create a Teams meeting link uh, in there. If you turn it off, you can certainly put a location in there. So, oops, we're not going to share our location today. If you needed to put your office location, you would just go ahead and put your address in there if you needed to. Um, and that would tag this with the location that this is an in-person meeting. Most of our meetings lately have been Teams, especially for things like consultations. So we'll go ahead and turn those on. And then you can schedule your duration. Now, don't forget, this is a public uh, thing we're having here. So let's maybe say that we're going to leave this at 30 minutes. We can also say whether well, this is a public or private event. We're going to leave this one as public. Maybe I'm going to put this on a postcard um, that they can go to my page and get an instant report, but then they can also book an appointment with me if they want to. Or if I'm scheduling this for an individual and I'm trying to just nail down a date and time that, uh, that we can all agree on, I can always make this private as well. And that's just a toggle, public versus private. That's all it is. So the one question that does come up when we're working with people is if we create this as a private event, can we also turn it public in the future? And the answer is 100% yes. So if you're trying to schedule a private appointment with somebody first, maybe you're just trying to um, get to your A list or your hot list first and you want to keep this private and let them book in first, you can certainly keep this private and then you could turn it public later if you wanted to open it up to, to other people as well. So we have a couple of things that we can do here as far as our options, and they're going to be under the advanced options section, but a lot of it is going to hinge on what we're going to do with our regular meeting hours here. So we can either use our regular meeting hours, and our regular meeting hours are usually set as a default in the system, or you can use custom availability hours. So for us, my schedule happens to be set from eight to five every day. Outside of those times, it's not going to let anybody book. If somebody tried to book a consultation with me at 7 p.m., it just wouldn't show up in my calendar. It just would not be available. Now, as a realtor, you can certainly set your appointments for different times. Maybe you don't take appointments for things like this until the afternoon, or maybe you need to schedule kind of an after work kind of thing for most of your people, and you may want to schedule your uh, Monday from five to seven or five to eight, whatever it happens to be you can certainly go ahead and change those times on here. 
You can also set it for only during a specific date range. So maybe this is a campaign you're running and you kind of want to do a big blitz on this comparative market analysis and you only want to do it for one week. Um, and that way they don't book out of your schedule um, for months and months on end. You could certainly put a start and end date in here as well. Um, if from time to time, it's also good to review these calendars. So you may want to go ahead and put an end date in here anyway, just so that you can review it and so that it doesn't book out you know, six, eight months ahead of time as well. It's up to you. If we go under the advanced options here and just keep scrolling, it's going to give us a couple of other options. <clears throat> it's going to give us something called the buffer time before meeting. This is actually important. Uh, we use uh, this calendaring system fairly often to set up trainings and set up consultations internally here, and we certainly set up a buffer time. Those buffer times are important because sometimes you need to just mentally reset before another appointment. Sometimes you need to be able to gather some information. Um, sometimes you just want to be able to have that breather just in case it runs long. You might want to set up that buffer time where it says you won't take something 15 minutes before another time or an hour before another meeting or even 30 minutes before another other meeting. You can also do the same thing with after. So if you need a uh, to be able to have, hit that reset button after a meeting and you want to put another hour in there, you can say, I want to have a meeting. Maybe it's set from two to three. It won't allow somebody to book at four o'clock. It won't allow somebody to book again until five o'clock if we have that set to an hour. And then you can limit your start time for 30 minute intervals as well. So the nice thing about this is that if you have somebody who books from two to three, for example, um, it won't allow somebody else to book until 3.30 instead of booking at three o'clock. If you have those others set to zero and zero, it just means it's giving you your 30 minute breather time in there as well. You can also set your lead time. Now, this might be important depending on the different kinds of appointments that you have. So maybe this is for like our comparative market analysis consultation. We're going to need time to put that report together. I'm going to need at least, let's just say, 12 hours notice, or I'm going to need a one-day notice on that type of appointment. It means that somebody couldn't log on to my appointment scheduler right now and book for 30 minutes from now. I certainly wouldn't be prepared for that appointment. So I'm going to make sure that there are no appointments available on that day for them, but it'll be available on the next day. And then again, we have that maximum lead time. This is where you can set out, OK, I don't want any appointments beyond 90 days. Um, and again, just a good way to just manage your time and manage your calendar. You can also set up email reminders. So these are going to be email reminders that go out to the person booking with you before the appointment. So you can set up an email that says 15 minutes before the appointment, here's the message they're going to get. Hey, don't forget that you have an appointment with me, so-and-so. Um, and then you can go ahead and hit save changes. There's lots of different time options on here. I always recommend, um, especially for appointments where people might have a high uh, incidents of missing it, maybe you do that 15 minutes before or that hour before and maybe a day before, something like that, just to kind of a, a little consistent drip reminder to let them know that they have an appointment. I certainly always appreciate the 15 minutes before, especially if I happen to be driving and I just need to click a link to be able to talk to somebody. Um, it gives me the option to be able to log in right away. You can also send an email follow up, which I do love. Um, we can use these in lots of different ways. Sometimes they're, hey, can you give us a rating um, and things like that? But if you think about it in terms of, of a real estate business, it's also great to say, hey, did I answer all of your questions? Um, did you need any um, additional follow up? Or I'm here for you. Give me a call or text or email, whatever it happens to be at any time. You know, thanks so much for meeting with me. Here's the link to be able to search homes on my property. Here's your individual link to be able to go to your client dashboard on my website, whatever it happens to be. So don't forget that you do have those automatic email follow ups available in here as well. Once you've made any changes and you've added some follow ups or some emails, you've added some time, you can go ahead and click save. And you're only going to get this little notification down here at the bottom that it has saved, but it certainly has. Um, if for whatever reason something's missing or it'll actually look for conflicts, maybe you've put in something that was um, that's going to make it so there's no appointments available or it's going to say that you check something, but you didn't add another box to it or something like that. You're going to get a little error message. It's going to show you where you need to fix something. But in the meantime, We've gone ahead and saved this, and now we have both our renter to buyer consultation and our comparative market analysis consultation that's available on our page. So these are both public, and again, we can change that to private if we needed to as well.
So on our individual bookings, we do have the ability to just link to that specific meeting type. And that's what I did with that renter to buyer consultation when it was on the website over here. That goes directly to that, uh, that specific meeting type on here. So there's that renter to buyer consultation. Let me get back here. Um, so we can actually go ahead and link to lots of different things on here as we want to as well. Let me get back to the share screen. There we go. I'll show you, you can copy the link for that specific uh, appointment type. You can also share that specific appointment type. I love the fact that you can duplicate it. Maybe you've put a lot of effort into all the different settings that you have and you want to duplicate it for different types of consultations or meetings. You can certainly duplicate it and then go ahead and change your title and description on here. There's where you can make that private. And maybe the event is finished or it's not something you're going to use in the future. You can always delete it if you need to. If you want to share your entire booking page, so everything on this list um, that's going to be public, you can certainly click that share button. And then, of course, you can copy the link. You can share it via email. Or it's going to give you, if you click on this with the email signature settings, it's going to give you the ability to add that to your email signature as well. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that link so that you can see what this would look like to the public. So if I go ahead and send this out, that's what somebody will see if I'm sharing my entire bookings page. So it's going to show all of the different public meeting types that I have on here and whether I'm available. So here's the comparative market analysis consultation and whether I'm available. And I can go ahead and click on two o'clock. Add my name, my email, my notes, and go ahead and book that. I'm not going to go ahead and add that to my calendar for the day, um, but it's nice and easy to be able to share that link however you'd like. So again, we can put that in our email signatures. We can put that in e-cards. Um, we can go ahead and put it on websites if we want to. We can, of course, share it just in a regular email to share to an individual if we needed to as well. Did anybody have any questions today about creating um, your calendar in Microsoft Bookings or how Microsoft Bookings might work for you? Any questions? No? All right. Well, we'll go ahead and conclude this class for today then on Microsoft Bookings. And again, if you need any help with some of these new Microsoft tools or anything else that we're uh, teaching on, you can always email web support at rwtown.com. We'll be happy to uh, help you through any of these tools that we're sharing today or set up a one-on-one -on -one, um, if you need some additional guidance as well. Thank you so much for joining me.